Hello. In this video, I am going to talk about phage mints. Phage mints are essentially a combination of plasmid and the M13 vectors. We have seen the cos mints. Cos mints are a combination of the lambda vectors and the plasmid, the, or the plasmid with the cos site. The phage mints are a combination of uh, M13 vectors and the plasmid. In the phage mint, what we have, we have M13 origin of replication, which is F1 origin of replication with the plasmid. F1 origin of replication is very peculiar in nature because it can replicate the double stranded DNA into the single stranded form. As I said before, uh, the single stranded DNA is extensively used for in vitro mutagenesis and uh, for the Sanger sequencing or the DNA sequencing methods. So, uh, coming to the details, phage mints, phage mints are plasmid that contain F1 phage origin of replication, which you can actually replicate the double stranded DNA into the single stranded DNA. Phage mints are small plasmids. Uh, it has the ability to accept larger DNA insert than the M13 based vectors. So the thing is that it is a plasmid with the F1 of replication, but it do not have any genes essential for the replication of the phage, uh, M13 phage. So it's a plasmid just like the cosmid. It is or the only region the phage mints is having uh, from the M13 vector is the F1 of replication. Uh, uh, because of the peculiar nature of the F1 origin of replication, it cannot replicate by itself. It needs some of the specific proteins produced by the M13 virus. So that proteins are absent in the phage mids. Uh, plus, in order to make into a viral particles, it also need uh, the morph the proteins for the capsid. So which is also missing in the uh, phage mids. So what we are doing, we are introducing a helper phage. The helper phage is uh, is a phage, just an M13 phage. Uh, which is which can produce all the four proteins essential for the replication of the phage mid as well as it's producing the capsid proteins for the uh, phage mids. But it do not have the ability to uh, insert or uh, be a part of uh, the uh, mature mature virion of the M13. So this phage is called a helper phage. Helper phage is providing uh, the proteins for the DNA replication proteins for the capsid production but it is not being getting inserted into the phage particles so what we do we insert uh, the uh, we transfer the phage mid into a, a squishy coli cells uh, which do not have the ability to replicate so to the same squishy coli we are infecting it again with the uh, helper phage the helper phage is, has the ability to produce the protein but cannot be getting inserted into the phage particles so what it what happens by using the proteins produced by the helper phage our phage mid will be mature into a mature virion. So uh, the virions will be having the single stranded DNA. Uh, so as our foreign DNA is inserted within the uh, within the uh, like phage particles. So each, each and every phage particles will be having our DNA in single stranded form. Uh, but in the absence of uh, this helper phage, the phage mint cannot produce virus particles. Instead, it will act like a phage mint. Uh, like a plasmid okay just like a plasmid it will be inherited from one generation to another just like a plasmid one example for this uh, phage mid is lambda sap lambda sap is an excellent vector it has so many properties it has the uh, gene region from the lambda phage it can package it into a lambda phage uh, we can do you either use the in vitro packaging or it is having the all the genes essential for uh, producing a functional lambda phage so it's a it is having the cos site, uh, then it is having the F1 origin of replication, it has having the lambda uh, laxi region, so it is having everything. It can uh, act like a plasmid, it can be produce functional lambda particles, it can produce uh, M13 uh, particles. So it's a very versatile vector, uh, which is also an example of the phage mid. Uh, so uh, for phage mid function, here is the structure of the uh, lambda sap. Lambda sap is having left arm of lambda phage and right arm of the lambda phage. Then they have F1 initiator and terminator. As I said before, uh, the F1 origin of replication is having two different region, F1 initiator and a terminator, which is which is actually actually in the genome, M13 genome, it is uh, placed together in the same DNF segment, but we can actually separate them together, separate into different places. So here we, we have done initiator in the one end and terminator in the another end. Okay. So inside that we have the blue region, which is having amazon resistant gene, colivinogen replication, and laxi gene with the multiple cloning site. Essentially the region from the uh, PUC18 vector. 
So we can actually insert our DNA of insert into the multiple gluon inside and we can transfer it into the bacteria. In the bacteria, uh, it can either uh, produce the functional lambda phage or if we infect the bacteria with the helper virus, it will the uh, regions between the F1 origin of replication and the F1 terminator will be excised from it and it will be made into a functional virion of M13. Okay, this M13 will, will be having uh, the DNA inside. So the region from the F1 terminator to the initiator, so the between these two will be excised and packaged into a uh, M13 phage. And this excised region is actually called P blue script. So it's also known as a vector. So the P blue script uh, blue script is actually a sub region of the lambda sap. It's a very excellent vector. Uh, so very versatile vector. Uh, so this the single stranded DNA in the form of P blue script can be used for DNA sequencing as well as for the in vitro mutagenesis and the selection can be based on blue white screening based on the ambicillin resistance production of phage uh, lambda phage particles or the release of the M13 phage. So so that's about uh, phage mids. Uh, next type of vectors is called artificial chromosome. This class of vectors are the last type of vectors which is specifically for the uh, we are studying for the uh, bacteria. Most of the vectors we have studied so far is used for the Scotia coli. And these vectors, the artificial chromosomes are as the name indicated, these are very large vectors, the vectors which are having very high carrying capacity. So when we studied, when we studied about the PBR 322, its carrying capacity was about uh, 4 uh, kilobase pairs. Uh, for 4 to 6 kilobase space, uh, but PUC80 has better uh, carrying capacity and uh, lambda phage is having higher carrying capacity and for then lambda phage we can use the cosmids. So as we studying more and more vectors, each and every one is having more and more carrying capacity for the foreign genes. In case of artificial chromosome, as the name indicated, these are very huge, really huge. So, and there is different types of artificial chromosome. One type of artificial chromosome which is used in Escritia coli is called P1 artificial chromosome. Its carrying capacity uh, is 70 to 95 kilobase pairs. It's very much higher than the lambda uh, phage vectors. So it is actually derived from P1 lytic vectors, uh, bacteriophage P1. P1 is having both the lytic cycle and lysogenic cycle and uh, they have two different origin of replication. The inner origin of replication for the lytic replication as well as for non-lytic growth. Okay, uh, so uh, it is having uh, one region is called PAC region. PAC region is the is similar to the coarse region of the lambda vectors. It's actually helping the packaging uh, into the uh, functional phase. Here we have an example of the PAC vector P1 artificial chromosome. It is having different regions. Uh, you can see P1 plasmid replicant, which is actually helping in the replication of DNA. Then cannabinoid resistant gene. It's an antibiotic resistant gene. Then it has P1 lytic replicant. Then it's have SCAB gene. SCAB gene is actually a marker uh, which is uh, which is actually used for cloning. Then it has LOX P site. LOX P site is actually controlling uh, the recombination of DNA. It can be inserted uh, to another DNA molecules and all. PAC region is doing the same function as the COS region. The PAC region helps in the uh, packaging of this DNA into the vector. Then it is also having another origin of replication which is derived from uh, bacteria, the cholinergic of replication, then it is having ambicillin resistant gene. So this is the uh, schematic diagram of the PAC vectors. So the peculiar feature of uh, PAC vectors is that it can carry a huge amount of DNA. So uh, advantages of the PAC, large size of DNA can be uh, carried, uh, no rearrangement of deletion of methylated DNA occurs because it can be used only in the restriction minus host strains. Uh, and recombinant DNA can be easily recovered as plasmid, so uh, screening is easy. Another type of artificial chromosome is called BAC. BAC uh, stands for bacterial artificial chromosome. These bacterial artificial chromosomes are actually derived from F1 plasmid, F plasmid actually. Uh, you are very much familiar with the F plasmid which is actually forming the male bacteria and it is mediating the uh, conjugation. So it is able to carry about 200 kilobase pairs of DNA, uh, even more uh, carrying capacity, and it is having an origin of replication called ORIS, and uh, its copy number is one. It's a very uh, less copy number. Only one cell will be having only one plasmid because of the huge size. Uh, 
uh, it's also uh, containing other regions like rep e par a par b and par c which is essential for the replication as well as the uh, partitioning of this uh, plasmid during the uh, dna uh, replication of the, uh, duplication of the cell uh, uh, when it undergo the fission uh, this par a par b and par c site will be partitioning the uh, helping in the replication of the phage and the uh, plasmid and transferring it into two daughter cells uh, uh, the DNA inserted into the back uh, used to be very stable. Here is the example of the back vector, P below back 11, with size is only 7.4 kilobase pairs, but it can carry about 200 kilobase pairs of DNA. So it is having different region. Uh, this is a canamycin resistant gene, which is used for uh, identification of the recombinant uh, strains. Then to have source of application called ORIS. Then rep P, par A, par B, par C, these all for the partitioning as well as the replication. It also has a cos site, so we can actually pack such also an example of the uh, cosmid. Uh, we can pack this DNA into the lambda vector, then log P site for the recombination and lac C gene, lac C gene with the multiple clone site. So we can clone the DNA here. So it is having uh, many regions. Uh, like, uh, but the size is only 7.4 kilobase space. So, this is all about the vectors used in bacteria. And as I said before, most of these vectors are uh, used in Escherichia coli. Uh, from the next class onwards, we will be talking about vectors which can be used in yeast, uh, plant cells, and animal cells. So, so far we have seen so many vectors, and these vectors we have different selectable markers. Selectable markers is used to, to select the uh, bacteria which is actually got the DNA the during the transformation process DNA the cells which is actually taking up the DNA um, with the DNA of insert or the foreign DNA so the examples of the selectable markers are ambicillin resistant gene tetracycline resistant gene both of them were in the PBR322 uh, and ambicillin resistant gene was seen in most of the vectors chloramphenicol resistant gene canamycin and neomycin resistant gene uh, bilomycin and Cosin resistant gene and hygromycin B resistant genes. So these resistant genes are actually used as a selectable markers. And all these vectors is having some type of another some type or another type of selectable markers. Uh, and there are different types of vectors. Uh, some vectors are called general cloning vectors. All of these vectors we have talked about uh, so far is general cloning vectors. These vectors can be used for cloning in a DNA replicating the DNA, you can make similar copies of DNA using these vectors. We have some other type of vectors called shuttle vectors. Shuttle vectors are the vectors which can survive in two different hosts. So none of the vectors discussed so far cannot survive in two different host cells. So, but after that, the next session, I am going to talk about yeast vectors. And most of these yeast vectors can survive in yeast cells as well as in the Escherichia coli. Such a type of vectors is called shuttle vectors. Shuttle vectors can survive uh, in two different host organisms. If it can survive in two different host organisms, which means it has the origin of replication for two different organ microorganisms, uh, two different organisms. If a shuttle vector is surviving in Escherichia coli and uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which means it has one origin of replication for Saccharomyces cerevisiae and another replication origin for the Escherichia coli. So those type of vectors is called the shuttle vectors. And we have something called the expression vectors. Uh, expression vectors can be of two different types, either RNA production vectors or protein production vectors. In RNA production vectors, if you are inserting a DNA, this DNA will be translated, uh, transcribed into RNA. So will be the cells will be producing the RNA uh, corresponding to your DNA. In the protein production vectors, what happens is like if you are inserting a DNA, corresponding protein will be produced by the bacteria. So these are the different types of vectors. In our following session, I will be uh, telling like this uh, plasmid is a sh shuttle vectors, which means it has two different zones of replication and it can survive in two different types of organisms. And some vectors I will say it's uh, uh, it is expression vectors. So it, it, is it has the ability to express RNA or protein corresponding to your foreign DNA. So that's all for this session. Thank you so much.